Hi, it's Lonnie with Crafty Traveler. This is my husband, Ernie. And today, he's going to show us what happened to the motor of my jack on the passenger side. Welcome to my channel, The Crafty Traveler. My name is Lonnie, and I'm a retired, part-time solo traveler. I love to camp and travel. I travel with my little schnauzer Snickers in my Mini Winnie, and I tow my Honda. We love to go to the desert in the winter, the mountains in the summer, and the seashore whenever we can. I enjoy doing sewing crafts and making quilts. I also go to retreats and quilt shows. I also like to paint and sometimes I show these on my videos. I'm a Harvest Host and Boondocker Welcome member. Come along and watch our adventures and see where we go. Give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay crafty, smart, creative, and safe, and thanks for watching. When I was at my last camp out, I attempted to lower it, and it wouldn't lower. I don't usually lower my jacks unless I'm with someone. And if you saw the video last December, you saw that I was with a friend. So, Ernie, take it away. Okay, what we have is a stabilizer jack that comes standard on the Winnebago. And what happened was somehow the motor was switched on apparently by shifting cargo and hitting one of those switches that I'm going to take care of later and caused it to literally burn out and when it burned out it froze and this side would not move now luckily it's a good thing that it froze in an upward position otherwise it would have been dragging and the whole unit would have had to have been removed in order to get the motor out and cause the uh, jack to be retracted and make it safe for going down the highway. So I ordered the motor. Uh, I got the part number online and uh, ordered it. took about a week to get here in the description below. And just a matter of taking the cover off and extracting the motor which is just four screws. The other part of that is there's a limiter switch that has to be adjusted so that the jack will not retract all of the way and go beyond a point at which the motor doesn't shut off. Now if it does not work when I get this all put back together then I do have a replacement part for that which I had to again order online and found it on Amazon. Little motor doesn't look very powerful, but it's powerful enough to make the jack go up and down when it's working right and well lubed. And this is the connector that connects the motor to the drive shaft of the jack. This is the inner face nut that goes on the shaft. It's half cut so that it only goes one way. That way it's able to be driven by the motor. The motor goes in and connects to the drive shaft. It can be turned when it's fully functional and not frozen because it's not burned out. Now there's four holes that I'm mounting the stop plate which will go on here and then we'll have to make that adjustment when it's actually installed and, and operating because it has to come to a point and stop the motor from continuing to turn. Now that we're in place I can put the nuts on. We'll lock everything into place once it's tightened. You only need to go finger tight if you have to do the replacement. 
see, we're all good to go on that. Next thing is electrical. You want to make sure that you've got enough wire to make your connection. So I'm going to have to do a little cutting here, shorten these two that were in the original. clean in for making your contacts. Now, the type of connector I'm going to use has a shrinkable end on it so that it'll watertight it as soon as I get done here. Continuing to make the connections here, positive to positive, negative to negative, using a crimp. Like I said before, the crimpers that I'm using, crimp connections, have a end that will heat shrink and waterproof the connection. And I'm finishing making my connections here sure that they're nice and tight. Then we're going to use a little butane torch and heat shrink the ends around there so that they're waterproofed. Nice waterproof connection. Let that cool a little bit. Then we're going to take and make sure the wire's tucked nicely in. We'll probably get a zip tie keep them from bouncing around. And we're just going to zip tie wires together so they're not bouncing around. Because there's a cover plate that I need to put over this when we're all done here and it's been tested out underneath. Unfortunately, the only way that I'll be able to know how well things are working is I have to go underneath the RV remount everything and make some adjustments. Seems like everything is a different size wrench on this unit. What is that one? This happens to be an 11 or 12 millimeter metric. I have to open this nut up enough to shut the pretty big spot. Of course, I'll have to make fine tuning once it's underneath. Now for the fun part, crawling back under the RV to reinstall it. Okay, we're done with that. So it's going, it's off. Go. Okay, so now we're plugging it back in. There's a long side and a short side, a two plug and a four prong plug. So we're going to plug in the Wrong plug first. It's gonna go in tight because it locks. Now we're gonna plug in the 
four prong plug. So what we have here to mount it underneath are two bolts, one on each side of this welded mount that's already on the RV. Put your light on. You see, it's just a matter now of tightening up these bolts after they're put in and aligned. And we'll be doing that next. Okay. So we're on the other side. And it's just a matter of lining up the bolts and getting them tightened. So we'll go ahead and do that next. We just tested it and it does work and now Ernie is doing some readjustments. It's hard to video underneath the RV so maybe Ernie you could explain what you're doing. There is a adjustment on the stop nut. You see where I'm pointing? Now I can see pretty good. Okay. Now this is, you're gonna have to run it in and stop when I say stop. Okay. So it's still too far out, huh? Yeah, it's because you don't wanna push the switch any further than we have to. Okay, just touch it up. Just tick, tick, tick. Now just touch it to see if it goes up any. That's it. Okay, actually I can keep it on this side. Alright, final test. Running it down. And up. This is a switch cover. We have an exposed switch in the basement which operates the stabilizer jack. And the problem with that is this stuff can move around while you're driving down the road and activate the switch and cause it to run when it's not supposed to. These are the switches that activate the stabilizer jack. Cause it to go up and down. Here's the cover 
we're going to dry fit, but it looks like it's just a little too small on the inside. So we're going to have to hollow this out a little bit with a Dremel tool so that it completely covers the mount. And then it will protect the switch from anything activating it when you don't want it to. Both of these switches will get a cover plate on them. inside was a lot smaller so I had to route it out with a little grinder on the Dremel tool just so that there would be clearance all the way around for this okay they're in the switches are covered so the cargo is not going to push the button accidentally See? You can bump against them and nothing happens to the jacks. And you can lift one up and push the button as you need it. Might have to have two hands. There it goes. And okay, new motor, new jack stand, new covers for the switches. If you like this video about replacing the motor on my stabilization jack in my Mini Winnie, give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay crafty, smart, creative, and safe. And thanks for watching.